Hello, Michael here with another ZBrush tutorial. Today we're going to look at how to model a very simple mushroom, which we'll be using in a future tutorial for rendering uh, with RenderMan and possibly Redshift. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, so let's get started. Uh, so we're going to start in a fairly low poly. First thing I'm going to do is just grab a sphere and hit T to go into edit mode. And then we're going to go to initialize. Uh, sorry, we're going to make it a poly mesh 3D first, and then we're going to go to initialize. I'm going to create a Q sphere. So the idea being that this mushroom is going to be sort of your bell cap mushroom. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit more stylized like I always do with, with sort of most of my stuff. Uh, but um, if you want to go more realistic, you can certainly use this method to do so. First of all, we're going to control select that lower half there and then just invert the selection. And I'm just going to scale it up. So I get this sort of dome shape, which is obviously going to be our mushroom. If I smooth subdivide it, you can see we get something that looks like that. And if I hit shift F, we're going to get our topology there. So um, I tend to start in low poly and then sort of work out from there into high poly. I just find it easier to get a good silhouette this way. You can start high poly if you want, but this is the sort of way I like to do it. So I'm going to hit B, Z and M to go to um, Z modeler. And then I'm just going to add in, holding down space, go to insert and single edge loop, uh, just so I can get a slightly harder edge loop around the edge of the, uh, the, the mushroom cap there. I'm also going to create another edge loop on the inside here. Uh, that's so I can move this point here. So I'm just going to hover over it, go to transpose, click on it, and then move it up just so I get a bit of indentation over there and you can grow the selection as well uh, just under masking and grow mask shrink mask rather because I'm thinking the other way around so if you want to get a little bit more of that you can then I'll just deselect that for now all right I'm going to turn on um, symmetry as well just by hitting X um, that should all have been symmetrical to now to now so if I mirror and weld yep it sure is Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go to geometry. I'm going to go to apply my dynamic subdivision, delete the lower. Uh, so we've got something that looks like this. And this is only at 642 poly, so this is still pretty low poly. And if I smooth subdivide that, you see it's not looking too bad. I'm getting a nice silhouette there as well. I like this taper out. Um, if you want to do more with it, you can. But um, I'm going to first add in... A split here so just over this center point I'm just going to split like that and then Q mesh poly oh, Q mesh a poly group island hold down space and over a polygon so we can get the stalk and then I'm just going to select that lower um, that lower polygon there invert that selection and then we're just going to grow it out so it's got a taper coming out and we just move that into place and you can make this look however you like obviously and obviously these are creased as well so I might remove that creasing so just hovering over the edge hold down space go to crease and then edge loop com uh, complete and if I hold down alt I can delete the um, creasing on that so I can have a little bit more control over that end and I'm going to do the same up here just so I can get a nicer taper. So that's all gone now. So now if I go in here and add in a, uh, go back to uh, Z modeler menu, holding down space, go insert, single edge loop. I'm just gonna click and drag that down. And then I'm just gonna hold down shift, turn on Z symmetry as well. So just smooth out that holding shift and yeah getting in there I'm doing this with the Cintiq as well as the mouse um, I sort of move between both at any time but um, you can see that now we've got a pretty pretty right looking mushroom um, if I turn off smooth subdivide you can see 666 faces or points so this is currently a devil mushroom, that's fine. Um, so what we're going to do now is uh, duplicate that mushroom because we're going to keep that low poly version, but I'm also going to go into geometry um, 
and I'll just apply that smooth subdivision again and then we'll go to Dynamesh and we're just going to Dynamesh this up uh, a lot higher. Uh, about 100,000 polys, it doesn't matter exactly how you do it. Then I'm going to go to Deformation, I'm just going to polish that up a little bit. Alright, so we have a nice smooth cap um, as well as um, a nice taper on our stem. So I'm just going to go and clean up some parts here, adjust that taper a bit further, try and get rid of a bit of that squareness, though I kind of like it. Um, and then we're going to use some radial symmetry. So I'm going to turn on Y symmetry and go to radial. Um, and underneath a, um, underneath a mushroom they've got these sort of spines that go up towards the, um, from the center outward. So we're going to use the um, standard brush, BST for standard brush, and turn down the Z intensity quite a lot. So we can sort of draw those in. And then you just want to work out how many you want. So I'm going to use 30, I think. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. So the underside's not going to get seen a whole a lot. Um, if, if yours is, then make sure you t take a little bit more time with this, obviously. But uh, on, on the shot that I'm planning, I know this isn't going to be seen a whole lot. So I just want this, just in case the camera gets a little bit low like that. But most of that's going to be in shadow. So these inner patterns aren't too much of an issue. I'm going to also use the Mar Cut brush. Um, you might have the Jar Cut or the Mar Cut. I'm not sure if there's a newer version now. Uh, you can find that on ZBrush forums. It's pretty common. Uh, brush for ZBrush and I'm just gonna define the indentations a bit more. I've just subdivided that again. You know what? I'm just gonna subdivide it again and polish it. So that's pretty much what I want. Um, now I'm going to go to the inflate brush which I think is a standard brush. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm just gonna inflate this edge a touch so there's just a little bit of overhang as well as it breaking the silhouette just a touch and let me smooth that a bit and you can go in and make this as detailed as you like like um, I've got this little cut brush that I which is basically a standard brush really uh, but it's just good for making details like this and always have your reference handy as well I've, I don't have mine up but I have made a practice run at this, so I sort of know what I'm going for here. And using the radial symmetry with something that's spherical or circular um, does make it a lot quicker to add in lots of detail very quickly, so um, keep that in mind as well. And let's have a look. I might just add a little indentation. So it's starting to look pretty cool from underneath. Um, what I want to do now is add some more interest to, or some more texture to the top part. Uh, I'm going to go to, yep, so just a square mask and mask out that top part and we can turn off radial symmetry now. Uh, I'm just going to invert that mask and I'm just going to just tap, hold down control and tap on the unmasked or the masked area just so I can soften that transition between the top and the bottom. And we're just going to add a little bit of texture in there. You can do this with a um, with an alpha or you can do it with the texture maker, I think. I'll have a look at the texture maker. Um, so I just under surface we'll go to noise and you'll see we get this sort of effect. That's pretty much what I'm after actually. So I'm going to roll with something like that I think. Um, just make sure that you get the scale right for you. Um, so obviously the higher the scale the bigger the noise is going to appear. Um, I want it to be just very fine and then um, you can adjust the strength as well. So if you want it to be smoother, lower the strength obviously if you want it to be uh, more relieved than negative values and then positive values if you want it to come out. So I want it to go inwards um, because if it goes outwards you see it sort of sits on top of that lip there which I don't want. Okay so something like that. Um, we want to apply to mesh and we can deselect and we get that nice transition between the noisy top and the not so noisy underneath part. Now what I'm going to do here, just looking at this transition, it's a bit too obvious, so I'm going to go to keeping radial symmetry on, I'm going to use my cut brush. Um, so this is basically the same as a mark cut, so it's just a mark cut with like really low intensity. 
So if you just want to use your mark cut, you can do that. But I'm just going to get in here with a very small brush, just add in a little bit of texture so it sort of bleeds into the softer areas. Just keeping it pretty random. Cool. All right, so what else? Um, my mushroom's going to have sort of a, a little sort of um, warty things on it. So we're going to jump in and uh, you can use the inflate brush or you can use the move brush. I tend to use the move brush quite a lot for this sort of thing. So I'm just going to use the move. I'm turning off symmetry now because um, this is just going to be random. I'm just going to hold down alt and select some areas. Now the key to doing stuff random or one of the keys to doing stuff randomly is um, try not to keep your spacing the same. So it doesn't hurt to have like a one or two which is kind of sort of semi close to each other. Um, and if you can use uneven numbers and then if you want you can go in and smooth the warts out just on the shift key. That's not too bad. I'm also going to add in some smaller little warts as well. So once again, just the, the move, holding alt, and then I'm just going to smooth these ones as I go. Now we've got pretty much all the detail that we want on. You can do something to the stem if you want. I'm going to keep mine pretty bare. Um, I'm just going to add a bit of smooth. I didn't realize I, under, I actually selected the underside there. Um, so watch out for that. I'm just going to smooth that out. I don't want that texture underneath. Um, turn on radial symmetry and just sort all that out at once. So now we can, normally I don't use ZBrush for painting, but for the sake of ease, I'm just going to use poly paint for a change. Um, I've got a paintbrush already set up. Um, so this is just basically any, br any brush. If, if you haven't made one before, um, you could probably download a paintbrush. It's just a brush with no uh, Z intensity, it just sort of works as a, a paintbrush. Uh, I'm just going to switch this to a white fill so we can see what we're doing. All right, so we want to select the um, just the cap of the mushroom, not the underside. So I'm just going to use the um, X and Z symmetry so I get it pretty symmetrical and then Deselect that inside part. And then reselect that top part. Invert that selection. Um, I'm just going to soften that selection a couple of times. Then I'm going to go to red color. Uh, not too red. So now you can see that I'm only filling the RGB, not material. Um, and not Z or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to make that tone a bit different. So decide on a color that you want and um, boy that really just wants to be red there doesn't it? Okay so we just need to, I'm just going to paint that out by hand. Um, Alright so that part's red. If we invert that selection we'll get this part here. I'm going to fill this with a sort of off-white yellowy type color. It's pretty desaturated yellow. Fill that. Then I'm just going to deselect so we get something like this. Um, and then I can touch up the edges here if I wish. Um, I'm just going to turn off symmetry for a second. Using my paintbrush, I'm just going to go and turn off lazy mouse as well. Don't need it. All right, that's better. And then if you hit C on any area, it'll switch to the color that's selected. So then you can go in and we'll just turn on. Um, radial symmetry again so we can just clean that edge up and if I was looking at my reference I'd know what the transition looked like exactly but I'm just gonna go something like that that's fine all right and then I'm just gonna paint these um, these spots a different color as well maybe something purplish um, and I'm gonna just increase that focal shift as well and you can decide how hard you want the um, focal shift to be if you want it to be real hard or soft around the edges of these spots I want it a little bit soft 
Um, if it's too hard, it just looks a little bit too cartoony. If you were going for a full on stylized mushroom, then probably like something more graphic than um, a hard edge would probably look nice. So I want something a little bit out there because I want the, um, when I render this up, I'm going to make this look like it's really glowing. So that's kind of cool. Um, you can decide on whatever colors you like. Um, I'll leave that one up to you. So I'm going to save now. Um, and I'm going to project to our low poly. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want to UV map this, this low poly base. So what I'm going to do is go to project, make sure there is a visible, you can go to, you can hit solo mode if you just want to see this, but you need to make sure that the tool is visible in your subtool palette. And let's go project all. And we do want to project the poly paint and then just control D to uh, subdivide that mesh again and project all again and just rinse and repeat. Uh, make sure that you turn off symmetry if you've got it on. And our high poly is at uh, 1.5 million. So we want to get around 1.5 in subdivisions just so we can make sure that that texture on the top there is visible. So uh, this is at two and a half million now. So I didn't get it quite right, but it's fine to be over. So I'm going to UV map this. Um, I'm just going to go down to Z plugin. It's up here if you don't have it docked. Um, turn off symmetry and unwrap it. Uh, make sure you're at your lowest subdivision level. Then I'm going to go back up to my highest subdivision level. And I'm going to create a texture map from Polypaint. And then I'm going to clone this texture to the texture palette. And this doesn't make any sense. It's just the way that ZBrush does it. That's how you export it. So uh, make sure you got it selected. Uh, we're going to flip the V because it's the opposite in Maya. And we're just going to export that. Um, I'm going to use a TIFF. I'm going to call this Shroom Text. Uh, and just export it to wherever you need. And then depending on which renderer you're going to use, you can um, export the normal and the displacement map as well um, for RenderMan or Redshift or whatever renderer you use. Uh, your settings are going to be different per renderer, so you'll need to check those out. I've already got a video on how to do it for both, so um, I'll try and remember to leave a link in the description to the Redshift version and the uh, RenderMan version for your displacements and normal maps. It should be pretty straightforward to follow those after having seen this video. Um, and finally, you can add any, um, at this point, you can add any sort of adjustments to your model uh, if you want that to be non-symmetrical, which I generally recommend. Um, you can just make your model look a little bit more interesting overall. So you can just, you know, do a bit of this sort of stuff, make it look a little bit more natural, bend there. You could even select this whole thing here um, then rotate it. But I'll leave that up to you. If you save before you do this, um, you could do a whole bunch of different um, shapes um, or even poly paints if you want for the same model, the same base model. Um, but uh, yeah, it's your, your choice in that at that point. That's it for this one though. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Look forward to the rendering portion later in the week. Um, if you did enjoy it, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of these sorts of tutorials every week for all sorts of CG products like ZBrush. If you want to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy modeling.